Without any reservation, the most notorious inmate to serve time at USP Alcatraz was AZ number 85, Al Scarface Capone. As the leader of the Chicago outfit, Capone is the poster boy for the effects that Prohibition had on organized criminal activity and organized criminal enterprises. Capone's arrival at Alcatraz was preceded by his trial for income tax evasion and his incarceration at USP Atlanta. His 11-year prison sentence began in May of 1932. Upon arrival at Atlanta, Capone was diagnosed with neurosyphilis, which would cause rapid deterioration of his mental faculties. Early on, Capone would have been targeted by fellow inmates, and it would have been clear that his reputation as a ruthless crime boss was a thing of the past. If it had not been for a former small-time associate of Capone's organization, he may not have survived to be transferred to Alcatraz. Red Rudunsky was a small-time criminal, but ranked fairly high in the Atlanta hierarchy. He would have been uh, a sounding board for uh, Capone and his complaints, as well as a protector for Capone. Because of Rudinsky's protection, uh, Capone, um, there was some speculation that he was receiving special treatment in Atlanta. Uh, in May of 1934, U.S. Attorney General Homer Cummings visited USP Atlanta, and he made it a point to investigate the rumors of preferential treatment. Even though he saw Capone and he looked a lot like a regular inmate, Cummings remained suspicious, and as it happened, the Attorney General was then preparing for a brand new addition to the federal prison system, a restored military fortification located on an island within San Francisco Bay. Early on August 19, 1934, Capone and 42 other prisoners were secretly led out of USP Atlanta to board a secure train heading for the West Coast. When they arrived three days later, the railroad cars were transferred directly onto a waiting ferry and taken to Alcatraz. Capone was only incarcerated at Alcatraz for four and a half years. The neurosyphilis would continue to erode his mental faculties, oftentimes throwing him into fits of megalomania, causing him to ramble and scream, uh, specifically to the warden, about his powerful connections and his friends in high places. Because they didn't know about his health condition, many of the fellow inmates uh, assumed that this... Uh, this was Capone going crazy because of his confinement, what they called stir bugs. Capone had a number of run-ins with other inmates, uh, slowly degrading into someone who couldn't get along with anyone. In an early incident occurring in December of 1934, uh, Capone got into a scuffle with his work partner in the prison laundry, William Collier, AZ number 185, and Capone uh, and he came to blows after Capone hurled a load of wet laundry at Collier because he was working too slowly. The incident would earn both men confinement in leg irons in a section of the basement known as the Dungeon, which was a holdover from the Fort Alcatraz days. This incident in particular, early on in Capone's residency at Alcatraz, showed him that he wasn't going to get any special treatment. On June 23, 1936, Jimmy Lucas, AZ number 224, who was an early tormentor of Capone's and a member of a clique of Texas and Oklahoma inmates called the Texas Cowboys, stabbed Capone multiple times near the uh, clothing supply room where uh, Capone was speaking to a guard telling him about a new mandolin he purchased uh, for the prison band. The weapon that Lucas used uh, was a, uh, a part of a uh, pair of steel uh, prison shears that another inmate, another Texas cowboy, had given him while in the, uh, in the prison barber shop. Capone's wounds were described by Warden Johnston as not serious, um, and he was, would have been shortly released from the hospital. Lucas was ordered to spend six months in isolation, and though he survived his confinement, it was said that, he, he, uh, that the experience left him mentally unstable. By 1938, Capone continuing his monotonous existence became more passive 
and more withdrawn. On the morning of uh, on the morning of February fifth uh, of that year, Capone caused some commotion in the dining hall as he shuffled out of line in a daze, staggered, and then vomited on the dining room floor. He was escorted to the prison hospital, never to return to population. One final incident in the prison hospital would finally accomplish what Capone's reputation, money, and lawyers could not, a transfer off of Alcatraz. Capone was confined to the bug cages in the hospital, um, so-called because they were used and set aside for mentally unstable patients. These cells were fashioned of wire, uh, so they were, they were uh, or they allowed communication among the inmates because they weren't made of, of solid uh, steel or concrete. Uh, Capone would pass the time lecturing and abusing nearby inmates, uh, including one, AZ number 393, Carl Janaway, who went stirbug shortly after arriving. At Alcatraz. I don't have a mugshot of Janaway. This is a, uh, a newspaper photo shortly after, uh, after being taken into custody in maybe Arkansas. Capone would taunt, uh, taunt Janaway and Janaway would respond. Uh, the two would yell and scream at each other, cursing and swearing like two six-year-olds in a sandbox according to inmate Alvin Karpus, who overheard one of these fights. It got worse. According to Karpus, Janaway reached into his bedpan, grabbed a handful of feces, and hurled it at Capone's cell. Karpus described the impact as the mess hit the hog wire as a volley of lead from a machine gun. Capone, furious, grabbed his own bedpan and threw a handful of his own feces right back at Janaway. The two would throw handful after handful until both men's cells were so covered in filth that they were slipping and falling on the floor. After they had exhausted themselves and emptied their bedpans of waste, orderlies were able to enter the cages, take the two men to the showers to clean themselves off, and then hose down their uh, hospital cells. This last anecdote provides a stark contrast to the infamous games gangster with whom so many people are familiar. The confused and disoriented Capone would leave Alcatraz Island on January 6, 1939 for transfer to Terminal Island and would be paroled on November 16, 1939. After a few weeks seeking treatment in Baltimore, Maryland, Capone spent the remainder of his life in Palm Island, Florida, where he died on January 25, 1947 at the age of 48. I do want to share uh, a, one little fact about Al Capone's nickname, Scarface. Uh, he earned this nickname by saying the wrong thing to the wrong man's sister one night. Taking offense on behalf of his sister, the man slashed Capone's face, leaving three uh, nasty little scars. Um, while it's a pretty fierce nickname, Capone hated it, and he often tried to position himself when taking photographs to hide those scars. Uh, and you would never refer to him as Scarface in his presence. His friends called him Snorky. Uh, 